Ever had one of those nights that starts out like any other, but ends up being the best night of your life? I did. Our goal that night was simple. 12 pubs, 12 pints. From the first post to the world's end. But that night, we never made it. The topic of perpetual adolescence has been something that's been, you know, been part of space and then obviously a part of Shaun of the Dead and, and Hot Fuzz. And in this one, we tried to make it quite a final statement on that, it, it, even to the point where, you know, maybe the villain of the piece is nostalgia itself. So in that way, we tried to make it feel very final. So it was the end of these three movies and the, maybe the last time that we'll deal with that as a topic. How do you go from the concept of the pub crawl to the concept of alien invasion? That seems like a big, big creative jump to me. <coughs> but maybe there's a there's a link there. That I'm I can do it in one sentence. This is my like what like one degree of separation. When you go back to your hometown, you feel alienated. Blah, 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 blah. Done. Why are we even here? We are here to get annihilated. You come back and everything's sort of weird. I suggest you get on your way. It's not us that's changed. It's the town. <laughs> That's where the whole idea came from, is that bittersweet feeling of returning to your hometown and, and feeling like a stranger. And so that very quickly became to make the, you know, to take that metaphor and make it that there's a reason it feels different, that it, it, it you know, it really has changed. The whole idea was like the town itself had been body snatched, you know, when you go home and everything is familiar and yet alien and it's that thing of it looks like the person you know but it isn't the person you know and that counts for the town and we just thought as a almost very natural progression what wouldn't it be funny if that was because it had been invaded <laughs> and, that, and that's also the thing about like there's quite a sort of strain in the movie about the homogenization of pubs themselves but that also comes from like we both came from sm small kind of like uh, english towns and moved to london and then you, when you go back out, it's like London has spread like a virus. And like, you know, even when we went back to Somerset to shoot Hot Fuzz, I always found it very bemusing that there was suddenly a Starbucks right in the middle of my hometown, which was a very sort of curious kind of sight to me. So it's, it's a little bit about that as well, really. Is that kind of depressing? I mean, the, the gentle politics of this film seems to imply that England is a lot more conformist and corporate than it was back in the 90s. Well, I think that's true, but then, then I think it's, there's, there's a flip side to that, is that on one hand, like, sort of, whilst, you know, like, uh, I miss, like, the, the kind of old independent cafes and stuff, you know, if, if I'm really, really honest about it, the coffee in Starbucks is better. Good evening, Raimondo. The prodigal son's return. Hi. Who's on the guest list tonight? Come again. The guest ales. We, sir, are doing the Golden Mile, and you have the honor of drawing first blood. <laughs> what do you recommend? And there's one. It's crowning glory. Rather fitting. How's that? I'm Gary King. What? So tell me more. Uh, what? Crowning glory. Is it nutty? Is it foamy? Is it hoppy? Does it have a surprisingly fruity note which lingers on the tongue? Mmm. Spear. Mmm. We'll have five of those, please. You two, flat shirt. Do you look back on that with nostalgia, or was it grim as hell? Not. With nostalgia, yes, but not with any yearning to be back there. I mean, uh, you know, that's the thing about it. we've always moved, and it's very important to any friendship that it moves forward and evolves. You have to mutate to survive, and I think if you ever stop, and it only becomes what went before, then it it's dead by then. You know, so yeah, I look back on Nick and I sharing a room, let alone a flat together, and think that was fun. And but it was fun and grim. Would I do it now? No way. <laughs> you know, it's like we'd have a bed each. <laughs> We'll have a big room with two king-size beds in. Right, yeah. like Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. yeah, that was very much like uh, we, we were back then, uh, not to compare ourselves to those uh, awesome greats, but we, we, you know, we were stuck in this little bed like Laurel and Hardy, you know, reading books together without any kind of impropriety or sort of... <laughs> well, that was touching. Yeah. Do, a, do an <laughs> Oliver Hardy look to camera at the end of this bit. Why not have to do the Hardy bit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so waitest. Are you still in touch with any of your friends from your hometown, teenage friends from those years? Quite a few of them I've seen recently. Um, uh, one or two of them I haven't seen for over ten years. And you had to break one of them out of rehab, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but some, of the, some of the lines in the movie come directly from 
actual experiences. And one of the guys that's coming tonight, there's a there's a, a line in the movie that he actually said to me. We were driving down to a wedding. Weddings are always the kind of weddings and school reunions are going back home is always where any of this awkward bittersweet comedy comes from. But I was sitting in his car and he was playing ACDC's Get It Hot and I was listening to this going, wow, I haven't heard this since I was at school. And I was thinking, didn't I put this on a tape for you? And he goes, yeah, this is it. <laughs> I said, this is the tape. And he goes, yeah. I go, wow, what is it doing here? <laughs> like, and then that is straight What's in the movie. What's wrong with you? Welcome home, boys. <laughs> It strikes me, though, that your success comes out of a kind of genteel failure. It's the sort of perspective of the, the nerdish outsiders. Do you, do you worry that too much success will take you away from that perspective? Or is that just a problem that failures have? It's to interesting. Worry about? Whenever we get asked about, and we still do get asked about another series of Spaced, it, one of the one of the reasons why we're not going to do it is because we couldn't possibly write it with any degree of truth now because that's not where we are or who we are anymore. You always, I always find it's better to write from a perspective of truth, even if that means research, research, research before you start, like we did with Hot Fuzz. But you, you have to you have to understand the situation that you're writing about in some empathetic way. And yeah, there is a danger. That's why we try and our very very best to to not inhabit some you know received idea of what it is to be successful you got to try and keep it real. Yeah. That's why our next film is going to be about buying a decrepit farmhouse in the Ardennes and doing it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be your caviar trilogy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, to fear and anxiety and pain. They seem so together now. The world is problematic, you know, for him. And I think that, you know, we can imagine that all. Mr. Gru, Agent Lucy Wilde of the anti I, I can pretty much excel at whatever I want.